what to do when a listing goes long in today's crazy hot market. Hi my friends, this is Clint Stitzer with Stitzer Properties and The Purposeful Practitioner. And today I want to discuss a topic that really we're all at risk of. And the risk is that as we head into the fall and the winter, we have these really high price listings that what if they go long? Because here's the truth, in a really hot market, if you have a listing that goes 14, 21, 28 days, 35, 42 days on the market, the truth of the fact, or the truth of the matter, excuse me, is that your sellers have people in their ear. They have family members, friends, coworkers, they're all saying like, your home should have sold by now, and it should have sold with multiple offers, and it should have sold above ask. What is wrong with your agent, okay? It's not so much hated the market shift, hated you overpriced the home, Hey, is it maybe not showing that well? Hey, are there any repairs that you need to make? Nope, nope. The sentiment is that in a hot market, if it doesn't sell and it doesn't sell quickly, way above ask with multiple offers, you, the agent, did something wrong. So how do we combat that? Well, the way that we combat it is that we have continuous, regular communication with the seller rooted in objectivity, okay? What do I mean by rooted in objectivity? Look, at this stage of the game, when you're marketing somebody's home, you might as well root the conversation in the fundamentals of, mar of marketing, right? So basically we just say, hey, here are the four areas of marketing. We have control over these areas. Are we making the decisions that's gonna get the home sold? And then we're gonna provide data for each area and allow the person to be objective about what's happening on why their home may or may not be selling. So let's dive in on what that means. Here are the four P's of marketing that we're gonna use to have great seller conversations. P number one is product. P number two is place. The third P is price. And then the fourth P, the one that we have the most control over as agents, is promotion. Okay? Now, let's look at the ones that we actually have control over. First off, do we really have control over price or place? We don't. A house is where a house is. It's not like this is a grocery store and our cereal isn't selling. And so rather than have it be on the bottom shelf at the back of aisle 18, we pay the grocer to put it on the end cap with a promo sign so that people grab it on their way to the cash register, right? That does not apply here. So place is really removed from the conversation. It is what it is. It should be built into the price. The market knows the neighborhood is what the neighborhood is, okay? As agents, we have direct control over promotion. What that means is we have control over where we put it, how we present it on those specific portals, how the listing reads, what order the photos go in, how many photos we take, how many tours we do, the signage, all those things, okay? Now the seller has control over price decisions and usually has control over product decisions. Sometimes, let's not go out into specifics. Most of the time the seller's in control of the product and the seller is in control over price. Now we can advise over decisions around product and price, but our executable is around promotion, okay? So let's just take an example where a house is on the market for 14 days and we wanted it to go into contract in seven days, or we thought that it would because when we interviewed for the listing, there was literally one home on the market in this submarket, that home site type, size, neighborhood, sells at five a month. So it literally just should have sold in one week because that was the month's supply inventory for that specific home, okay? Well, over those 14 days, I'm gonna be in regular communication with the seller, and I'm gonna share with them the effects of the promotion. Now, what does that mean? Well, how many hits are we getting on the internet? That means how many hits are we getting on the MLS? How many hits are we getting on Zillow, on the portals, right? On Realtor, or on Redfin? How many eyeballs are engaging with the listing online? Because we all know that's where the search starts. Then the next question about effectiveness of promotion is how many people are looking at it online and then how many people are going to take the next step and look at it in person? So at the top of the funnel, we have online views. Then the next stage of the funnel here is we have visits, right? How many people have come to the house? So how do you provide that data? Well, first we get MLS view data from the MLS. We get Zillow and Realtor and Redfin data from, from the back end of those three portals. We send those to the seller. Hey, great news, your home is getting a ton of activity. Shoot, Zillow will even tell you how much online activity you're getting versus other homes. Then we're gonna look at the showing report. How many showings have we had in these 14 days? If we've had 15 showings and no offer, then something's materially wrong with our product or price, okay? 
But let's say that we've had a ton of visits um, and no offers. Well, why not? Then the next question from feedback or from the visits is we want to know about the feedback. Hey, what are people saying? Why is feedback so important? Not just so that an agent can tell you that you're overpriced because they're posturing for negotiations, but literally we want to know what buyers are telling agents on why they weren't interested in pursuing a home. Now, oftentimes most agents don't leave feedback. Why? I don't know. We're busy, whatever, whatever. The client doesn't want it. You're moving on to the next one. So your job as a listing agent is to call and solicit it. We've got to have great relationships amongst each other and we got to help each other out. Okay. Cause if I give someone great feedback, then the likelihood the next time they see one of my listings, I'm probably going to get great feedback from them. All right. So, we get the feedback and then we're objective with the seller. Hey, look, I, I got great, great news. The promotion is working. We're getting great online traffic. That online traffic is converting to in-person visits and those in-person visits are not converting to offers, but they're converting to feedback. And the feedback is that we have product related issues. The product meaning it might not show that well. The experience of the showings isn't great because there's neighborhood dogs or there's something materially wrong with the home that we need to fix or address or that's scaring buyers, okay? Or maybe we get feedback and the, the feedback that it's price or that it's some mix of the two. In other words, the product is deficient, so we've got to address the price, okay? So the reason why I'm breaking this down in these areas is because now I'm giving you a dialogue that you can speak with your seller about. All right, well, let's look at the three Ps that we have control over, promotion, promotion's working. In some instances, the promotion isn't working because we're getting a ton of online views, but no foot traffic. Well, why aren't we getting any foot traffic? Well, maybe we're overpriced. Maybe there's something in the photos that's turning people off. Maybe there's something in the tour that's turning people off. So there is an opportunity to amend our promotion to get people in that isn't price related. Okay. Now, if the promotion is firing all the way through, then the conversation becomes, well, the only two factors we have left, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is product and price. Now the feedback says that the home is great and people really like it, but that they just don't feel like we're asking a fair price relative. So at this stage, we have an option. If you really wanna get your home in contract and you're really concerned about the job that I'm doing, then we need to evaluate price because the promotion is working. People are seeing it online, they're seeing it in person. The feedback says the product is great, that only leaves price. At this stage, if the seller says, look, I am not interested in removing my price or moving my price down, I am patient, I am in no hurry, then fantastic. You've given your seller an objective conversation to think in their head when little birds are chirping in their ear that something's wrong with their agent, they can say, no, 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 my agent's on top of it. We've evaluated the promotion, we're getting great traffic, we're getting great feedback, we're getting great showings, and I know that I'm asking a premium. Shoot, they even told me when I interviewed that I was asking a premium but I'm willing to wait to see if I can get my premium, okay? Now, the reason why this is so important is because what a lot of agents will do is a lot of agents will work really hard on promotion. They're really hard to solicit feedback. They'll suggest price reductions, reductions but maybe the seller doesn't wanna do it. They don't have the ability to objectively confront a product issue. Maybe it's a smell, maybe it's something like that. The goal is if you're working hard on your promotion, you're getting feedback from the market, you can be very objective non-confrontational, non-personal about the price and the product parts of the equation. Because at the end of the day, this is an equation. Marketing a product is an equation of product, place, price, and promotion, okay? So again, the other thing that you have to do is you have to be talking to your seller about this regularly, okay? Unfortunately, like many of you, I've also been fired from listings more than once. And every time that I've gotten fired and I've really looked hard, I've taken inventory, where did I blow it? Where did I go wrong? Usually it's in me not communicating these four principles and staying in regular touch about what the seller wants it to do based on an updated objective look at those things. Let me give you an example. Let's say that the seller just says, look, I know I'm overpriced. I want to be patient. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to hold. Don't even bother me because I don't want to talk about it. I know that the market's going to come to me. Okay, cool. I won't bug you. I know every time I look at it that we're above the market. I'm getting this feedback. I'm forwarding it over to you and you're ready to wait. All during the meantime, the seller's still having people in his ear. What's wrong with Clint? What's wrong with Clint? How come it hasn't sold? In the meantime, I think they're fine. Shoot, they're getting the listing alerts. They're getting the Feedback reports that says price is too high. They said they want to wait. We're good to go. Nope. At some point in time, they want to end the relationship because they said I wasn't proactive enough about educating them about their decisions to get the home sold because in fact, they needed to move quickly. 
Okay, I'm just giving an example, and it was an example that was painful for me, and it's happened to me multiple times, but every time that I've really taken inventory, it's because I didn't stay in touch, I didn't stay objective, and I did not educate my seller regularly and really learn what their drivers were. So I hope that this platform, uh, these principles can be something that can give you the tools to have regular, meaningful conversations with your sellers and continue to thrive, even though some of your listings might go long. This is Clint Stitzer with Stitzer Properties and the Purposeful Practitioner, wishing you great success in your real estate career. If you have any questions, you want to chat, shoot me a call. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.